Yo, my mom found a bunch of pictures of me. She found like a binder and it has a whole lot of shit from when I was like five. So it's got like shit like this. I got a book of poetry. I don't know when I wrote this, but this is mine. I, I think kindergarten probably. I have a table of contents, bro. Like check this shit out. This shit's no joke. I worked hard on this. Don't make fun of my handwriting, by the way. Here's a Capri Sun straw that's been stuck in there. I don't know how long that's been in there, but that's probably like 15 years old. Okay, here's a, here's a poem about chess. And I think those are boobs, like a five-year-old's version of tits that I drew. I, I, I don't know. Also, that's supposed to be a chessboard. It, that's not how a chessboard looks, I know. But let me read it. Chess pieces, chess pieces on my board. I call my king the lord. I'll move my bishops. Oh dear, I got the hiccups. I'll move my knight. Oh geez, I'm shivering with fright. I'll move my queen. Hey, you're so mean. Hey, wait, I'm in checkmate. <laughs> I got bars, bro. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna, I don't I haven't read this one yet. I love you the bluest, as blue as the deep blue sea, as blue as the glittery sky, as blue as the whooshing wind. <laughs> As blue as Pluto, <laughs> as blue as a blue bonnet waving in the wind, as blue as a blue jay singing in the trees, as blue as blue fire. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh, God. Yo, check out my picture, bro. This is another poem. A dream is like imagination putting me in a fantasy world, like magic wizards and flying foxes whooshing in the sleeping sky. <laughs> Charizard, that's a f***ing fox, bro. This is me uh, at my high school. So like everyone graduating, like they had like all the students in like the cafeteria, like all the seniors, like haha, they're graduating. And this is what they plan on doing. This is me and I, was, I went to UTSA. It's, a go it's basically a college you go to if you can't get into UT Austin. You go to UT San Antonio and that's me, I, I was pathetic. And then my mom also found a binder I don't know what's in this binder exactly. I guess this was supposed to be like one of those idea webs. Maybe you guys have done that. This is in 2002, so I was eight. Fun memories, math, water skiing, boogie boarding, and what is that? Tubing. Okay, I must have just went camping or something. Uh, oh, hell, bro. I, this is like, my teacher graded this and there's a lot of red marker everywhere. This is bad. Oh, I up oh man yo look at all that highlighter bro <laughs> okay so one of my fellow students must have graded this and they said p.s you need to work on your handwriting you can see it here what the f is it really that bad <laughs> misspelled the word work <laughs> you need to rock oh god I am special because I am loved by my parents. <laughs> That's the fucking first sentence. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> oh no, man. Mingo the tiger and bird brain the parrot lived in a jungle. The jungle has green trees, steep waterfalls, and there was blue flowers you and red flowers and, and, and orange actually, flowers and yellow flowers, green flowers and purple flowers. <laughs> if you want to read, like, look at all the fucking red mark lines through the and, 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 and. <laughs> The parrot's colors were purple, blue, green, orange, yellow, and red. The tiger Mingo's colors were orange, red, and yellow, or orange, red, yellow. I forgot and. The parrot lived in Mexico on a barn, but on that day, Bird Brain, Bird Brain's father died. And another very bad day was when Bird Brain was flying while she was flying her friend mingo said hello and she turned her head and said hello back <laughs> bam she flew into a tree and died <laughs> yo
Yo, I'm a fucking artist, bro. <laughs> did you say BAM? Look, I, I did it in all caps. You and BAM. <laughs> well, it's not even caps. It's just I've used like five lines. It's fucking full of send it. Uh, here's a picture. This is me in middle school football. Or no, it was Pop Warner football. Northwest Austin Longhorns 2005. So I was nine years old. I am right there. 46. Oh, yeah, I'll just say the number. I'm 46, I think. Oh, f Here's a better picture. I didn't know I had any pictures of me in football. I have never seen these before. Oh my God. I have an essay that I wrote for Miss Tucker. This is a rough draft. Get to work, Zach screamed. He was the leader of the dwarves. The dwarves mined their mushrooms. They were selling mushrooms at 50 cents a package. After about a week, people began to stop eating mushrooms. In Elfania, Bobby the Elf had just invented the chocolate chip cookie. People preferred to eat the cookie. Bobby sold one cookie for 10 cents and 12 cookies for a dollar. The cookies became so popular that Bobby had to hire 1 million elves to sell the famous chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> The word spread throughout the world and soon reached the dwarves. The dwarves had to put a stop to this madness, so the dwarves decided to have a war. <laughs> the dwarves gathered around one million dwarves to fight against the evil chocolate chip cookie makers. The dwarves loaded their weapons with mushrooms and prepared for war. <laughs> One of the elves was traveling through the woods and saw this menace. The elf rushed toward Elfania. In a couple of days, he arrived with the news and warned every elf in Elfania. Bobby the elf thanked the messenger and in return, he received a lifetime supply of chocolate chip cookies. The elf ran back home screaming in joy and happiness. Well, let's forget about the screaming weirdo. Anyway, Bobby decided that if the dwarves wanted a war, they would get it. The elves began to bake cookies even faster than before. However, in one day, they were only able to bake 10,000 cookies. Bobby yelled at every elf in the factory screaming, Can these support 1 million elves? He asked. I don't think so. This is telling me that some of you are not working. If I don't get enough cookies today, you will not be paid until you make the right amount of cookies. Luckily, the elves came up with 100,000 cookies. Oh, I'm sorry, a hundred million cookies. The elves completed their work and began setting up defenses. They built towers, walls, and a barracks. Back at Dwarfania, <laughs> the dwarves were preparing to head to Elfania. This is so bad. The dwarves took off on their long and challenging journey. They lost many men on the journey from starvation and sickness. They ended up making it through though. After about a month, they arrived in Elfania. The dwarves set up camp there. They loaded their weapons and then got sleep. Most of the dwarves went to sleep at eight o'clock. Why that? Man? When the dwarves woke up, they grabbed their weapons and stretched their bodies. Then they put on their armor. <laughs> Soon the dwarves heard a strange sound coming from the elf camp. The dwarves did not know what the sound was, but the dwarves did know that the sound was supposed to warn the elves that the dwarves were here. Dude, I'm so confused. Who was attacking who? Millions of elves rushed out of their camps and lined up. The sky grew dark and fog came up from the ground. It became silent. Charge, Zack screamed as the leader of the elves. The dwarves ran towards the elves and the elves stood their grounds and raised their shields. And then it, it just stops. So who knows? Who knows what happened? That is it. Bro, what the fuck? And then I'm looking at the back and I'm seeing it's like graded by my teacher and a fellow student. Oh, I remember not liking her because her fucking handwriting was good. This is some girl's handwriting. Like, how the f do you, like, that's better handwriting than me. And I'm like 27. Like, damn. It was kind of funny. <laughs> All right. That was stupid. I'm not reading that shit. Oh my god. Damn, I own. Check this shit out. You can tell I f***ing owned at school, bro. I'm a player. Damn. I'm dripped out. Damn, I'm f***ing leaning and shit. You see that? Oh, here's a picture of my brother, Dustin. Dustin was a fucking... He was short. 
for his age. Oh my God, here's me in baseball. Y'all don't care. I feel like, I feel like a mom right now showing off like pictures to like, I don't know, some new girlfriend that like my son brought home. But this is, this is actually what my mom does to my girlfriends, but I know she doesn't care, right? It's interesting to me, I'm gonna keep showing. Fuck funny. That's actually my dad, the coach, right there. And I am, oh my God, that's me. I'm not happy to be there. I'm still leaning, bro. Yikes. Here's some more pictures of Dustin. He'd be a player, check him out. And then here's a picture of me. This is the last Halloween I ever celebrated. I just grabbed a bunch of random sh out of my mom's costume box because she like runs, runs a dance studio. So she has like a costume box of random sh I just put on a wig. As you can see, I tied my shirt up like that and I put on the mask and I was like, hey, this will do. And I went and got candy. All right, here's me at camp. You can maybe find out which one I am. Oh, hey, remember the kid I locked in the lost and found? Right? Remember there was a kid at my middle school, I locked him in the lost and found? His name was Grayson? That's him right there. See, he's like real f***ing small and shit, but he was cool. We went to camp together and shit. Why do you always look miserable? Probably because I think I remember having the mindset of like smiling in pictures is like not cool. I mean, playing video games wasn't cool. And it was all about being cool, right? Especially at that age. It's just how it was. Uh, here's some other picture. I don't know, it's Camp Buckner. This is where I played dodgeball. Shit was hype. Dude, this, this shit is taken on not even a flip phone. That shit is blurry, but that's me at Camp Buckner again. At the archery range? Yep, definitely at the archery range. Check it out. I'm owning. Who the f took these pics? I have no idea. This is on a cruise. I think I was a freshman in high school. That's me, Dustin, my mom. Bieber hair, yeah. This is me with uh, this one girl. I went on a church retreat and me and her were hanging out. She's cool. I don't remember her name though. Oh God. Yeah, I think I was in ninth grade eating a f hot dog. Damn. Oh, hell no. Okay, before I show this, my mom owns a dance studio like Joyce Will at School of Dance, all that jazz. She runs a dance studio, that's what she does. Not anymore, but used to. With that being said, the thing about dance, they put on shows, right, to like make money. So they not only taught people how to dance, but you know, once a year they'd have like, you know, the big show or whatever. And in order to have like a, a good show, you have to have some guys because some guys have to play the character. Like you can make some exceptions, like they had, uh, Let's say in one dance class, you'll have like 20 girls and one dude, if you're lucky. They had a lot of girls play like Michael Jackson, for example, things like that. But occasionally like there's a role that like a girl just can't do. Like it's, it's a dude, it's too dude-like looking. So our family forced every dude in the family to take dance, especially at a young age. This was not by choice. <laughs> it's just brutal, bro. <laughs> I had to play the fucking Western guy. <laughs> it's not by choice. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on here. I have no idea. That's Dustin and me. I, I don't know what's happening, but we be kind of skinny. I don't know what's going on here. I got, I, I don't know. This is me probably junior year of high school at like a school gathering or something. I always had my laptop and I'd bring everything. I would just play games. I look good in that picture. Ah, and not in this one. I don't know what's going on, bro. That shit's bad. Is me and my three brothers. Dude, I'm wearing basketball shorts. I don't know when this was taken. This had to have been 10th grade probably. This is before I learned how to smile properly. Just didn't quite have the look down. Baby picture, don't look at that. This is the family I grew up with, like lived in the house. My uh, niece, but technically I call her just my sister, Samantha, Dustin, dad, mom. They're idiots, poggers. Get off my screen. Yo. Sigma is f check that shit. This is at a homeless shelter. I was at a church retreat. We were going through a bunch of like clothes and shit. And there was a lot of clothes in there that like even the homeless didn't want. Like ain't no one taking this shit. And we were just going through them. I put these, whatever this is, I put it on and they took a picture. <laughs> Nowadays people would call that drip. Chance Writing Journal, Laura Mountain Elementary School, 2004 to 2005. Today is my first day uh, in fifth grade. So far, Miss Myrick seems really nice. I misspelled nice with an S. I hope she doesn't give me a lot of homework. I like teachers that give me one subject a day because I need to learn a lot for college. Miss Christic was pretty hard. That was my fourth grade teacher. But now that it's over, I'm glad that I did it because I may get a good college education and my mom and dad I'd say this is going to be easy cheese for me because I'm used to hard teacher Miss Christic. I'm also good at math, which is why I'm in tag. 
Oh, I was in accelerated math. We called it tag. I don't know, which is why I'm in tag. I forgot about that. Holy f in third grade, I was horrible at reading. I still am. But now that I'm finished with my fourth grade teacher, I'm getting three different grades at it. 90, 95, and 100. I am an A plus at spelling. I'm always getting a 100 at spelling. Okay, so that is the first page. And that's not what I wanted to show. The next page, I have a story. It's called Furry Things. Look at that. It's in cursive, so I guess that's when I learned how to write cursive. Before I read this story, I am really bad with names. Maybe you've seen in any character I've created in any game how bad I am with it. It, it goes so bad, I had a lot of gerbils, and we named all of them based on their fur color. So we had Whitey, we had Blacky, we had Brownie, and we also we got really stumped when he got a we got a gray gerbil. It's just pure gray. We still called him Gray E. Like we had to like double emphasize gray e like that's what we did and so i can tell i couldn't think of a name for the wolf so i just named him after my dog I, I couldn't do it moving on once upon a time there lived a little wolf named hank hank was a poor wolf in a big house you may be wondering how he would live in a big house if he's poor well his dad was the one who scared off Little Red Riding Hood. But when she ran away, she stole all of our money. For a trade, we stole her house. <laughs> After three years of living in that house, Hank found a secret room with all the fur that can give all the animals in the world fur. Hank was very nice, but Hank wanted to wait until Christmas to give it all up. So the wolf waited and waited. Hank was getting bored, so he went to go and something the three little pigs house down. Oh, blow the three little pigs house down. First, he blew down the straw house, then the house with sticks. Then he went to the brick house and tried to blow it down, but couldn't. And he got bored and walked away. <laughs> when Christmas came, everyone came with presents and everyone asked where the wolf's presents were was every time the other animals asked him he said it's a surprise the wolf got three present from the animals uh, one was a chew toy one was a bone the third f man this is so hard to read the urge of an elephant so this the side of an elephant? I don't know. The third present was money. When everyone was looking at the wolf waiting for him to show his present, so he opened the present door and all the animals looked with... I tried to use a big word here. Amazement. Oh my god. Like, I want you to look at this, and, and this is so hard to read. This is amazement. Hang on. Where my finger is. Index finger. Like, that's what I'm trying to read here. They looked with amazement. They all jumped in the room, taking all the fur they could carry. The end. Bro. Oh, this is written by my dad. This was because it was a private school with only 50 people in the grade. Every single person who graduated got a lot more. You got more attention, right? It was more individual attention for graduating. So instead of like, hey, your name gets called and you get a piece of paper and they kick you off the stage right that's how they have to handle like high school typically because there's like hundreds instead for our school they would call someone up on the stage for example me a teacher would literally give a speech about that student then your parent would give a speech about you and then their friend would give a speech about you this is my dad's speech he gave okay my dad is funny so it's probably not going to be cringe my dad is the one to go up on a stage and make people laugh rather than like give some heartwarming emotional shit Thomas Jefferson Chance Morris. This is his legal name. Thomas Jefferson is the name of his grandfather and great-grandfather, but Chance is his identity. When Chance was an infant, he had ear infections. And as a result, he didn't hear so well, and therefore his speech development was a little slow. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the beginning, I swear to God. In other words, he didn't say much. He didn't cry much either, which his mother and I appreciated. This made him rather independent. As soon as Chance learned to walk, he learned to climb out of his baby crib. One night, we discovered that Chance had crawled out of his bed, went to the kitchen, got himself a snack, and turned on the TV. I guess he didn't know how to change the channel, so he spent the whole night watching church services on TV. He was two years old. This was not going to be a 
uh, acceptable to us as his parents, he could climb out of his bed and decide to tour the neighborhood at three in the morning. So we uh, put a lock on his door, but Chance turns out he was very industrious and learned how to unlock the door. We could not figure out how he was getting out of his room, so one day I decided to peek through his window to watch and see how he would do it. It was an amazing sight to see this little two-year-old grab his wooden shoe toy and take the end of the shoestring and with great dexterity put the end of the shoestring into the small hole at the doorknob and pick the lock. I was amazed at how he did this and thought he was going to be a great engineer with great problem solving skills. But Chance did not want to forsake his artistic side. He wanted to paint, but not having the proper tools for painting, again, Chance utilized his problem solving skills and took up poop painting on his bedroom walls. These are all true stories, by the way. I need not say anymore. As Chance grew up, a lot of the boys his age took up sports as well as he. He played Pop Warner football and wasn't that bad as a defensive end and linebacker. But my connection with Chance was baseball. Chance was an enigma at baseball. He would clobber the ball into the outfield and then stumble running to, to first base. I would trip a lot. My proudest moment with Chance is when he demonstrated his ability to overcome and excel. He was pitching in an all-star tournament. All-star is like, you play baseball, for example, and then you play against all the other teams. And then one person from all of those teams you played against after the season's over, the best player from all those teams come and form one team. And then that team plays other states and stuff, or cities rather. I was on the all-stars, just saying, not a big deal. He was pitching in an all-star tournament and was getting lit up either walking everyone or just getting hit hard. It was difficult to watch and I felt so bad for him. I know he was very frustrated and having serious doubts about himself, of course. <laughs> they lost the game and it was mostly his fault. <laughs> okay. But the very next day, Chance had to pitch again. He rebounded so well and pitched a no hitter striking out almost everyone. I was so proud of him to be able to overcome so well. Chance has grown into a remarkable young man, and I have come to respect and admire his compassion, the respect he shows to others, and of course, his ability to excel when he needs to. And they said, I love you, Chance. God. All right, so that was my dad's speech. And then here's my friends. This is much shorter. I've known Chance since ninth grade throughout high school. I've seen him run into a barbed wire fence. I've built a trebuchet with him and played video games together until six in the morning. Chance uh, can type 125 words per minute, is a video game fanatic, and he loves soda. <laughs> On top of all his talents, he is also a hard worker, a dedicated student, and a reliable friend. He will do almost any dare, which has included walking into Dollar General dressed as a girl and having his nails painted in physics class. Chance has been one of my closest friends throughout my high school career and will always be very important to me. I hope that throughout college and the remainder of our lives, we will stay in touch and continue to be close friends. The end. All right, this is a very interesting. So I want you to look at this picture. This is in 2002. All right, I think this might have been my first year here. Dude, I, I came back the next year and I was a lot more comfortable. So just contrast here. 2002, 2003, bro. <laughs> oh my God. Yo, f the bas this I hated basketball, man. I f hate this sport, but that's me with the ball. God damn it. All right, here's me. This is when water guns were hype bro i had a super soaker both feared me i don't know what kind of face i'm making i don't know what's going on but i think this is the christmas we got hank hank is a boxer is our dog we actually got him on christmas so maybe this was the day and i just thought he was so cute i don't know what's going on here i have no clue this was a middle school dance and it was disco theme i went in hard this is on a cruise ship when I was like two. Something called a big red boat. I have no clue, it's me and my mom. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I got no clue. And then here's the whole family, whatever. I think there's a picture where people actually photoshopped my face on every single one of my family members. So it's actually just, just all the way down my face in the back. Oh God, by the way, here's the picture. <laughs> cursed <laughs> that shit trips me out uh i think that's all of it yeah my family's rather large it's also 
Uh, my mom had a daughter when she was 16 and then that daughter that she had when she was 16 had a kid when she was like 18 and, and then of course my mom then had a kid so i have nieces and nephews that are older than me i was an uncle the second i was born